In this video, we'll talk about lines and signs. Lines stands for long interspersed nuclear elements, whereas signs stands for short interspersed nuclear elements. These are actually transposons. In this video, we would learn their functions and why they are even relevant. We would also look at their features. Signs and lines are short and long interspersed retrotransposable elements, which are uh, one category of transposons, which transpose from one region to the other region using RNA as an intermediate. Lines and signs are poly A retrotransposons, which are different from the retroviral retrotransposons and it lacks the inverted terminal repeats. Lines and signs are found in almost all eukaryotes. In fact, they comprises 34% of the eukaryotic genome. Lines are autonomous retro elements. That means they code for their own uh, retro, uh, the reverse transcriptase enzyme. Whereas signs are actually dependent. They can't code for the enzyme itself. They are dependent on the line derived enzymes. As the name suggests, lines are much bigger compared to the signs. Mouse lines are actually bigger than 6 kilobase pairs, whereas in human signs or short in interspersed nuclear elements are somewhere ranging from 200 base pairs to 400 base pairs. Now let's look at the features of line in a bit more details. At a first glance, they look like protein coding genes. They have 5' UTR, 3' UTR, and uh, they don't have inverted terminal repeats though. So 5' and U, uh, 3' UTRs are adjacent to a poly A uh, site which is characteristic of any protein coding gene because uh, mRNAs has polyadenylation sites, right? The ORF2 codes for two important protein. First protein encodes for a RNA binding protein and the second one encodes for reverse transcriptase and endonuclease activity containing protein. Both these ORF2 products are important for the transposition reaction. So let's see uh, how this thing happens. So lines codes for this particular protein with endo and reverse transcriptase activity that can be also required for signs for a stable genomic uh, integration. That means signs are totally dependent on lines. Lines are autonomous, signs are non-autonomous. Signs are similar to lines, but they are shorter, simpler, and they are uh, almost totally dependent on lines. Let's see how lines or signs get integrated into the genome, how these transposons can hop from one region to another. So this is a line. So generally they can be transcribed with the RNA pol 2 So RNA pol 2 transcribes them and forms the line mRNA. So line mRNA is very peculiar like a normal mRNA found in the cytoplasm. So th this basically kind of like similar to any other protein coding genes mRNA. It has a 5' UTR, 3' UTR, it has a polyadenylation site. But what if two derived proteins immediately bind to the line mRNA and it forms a complex. This complex guide the further steps in the process of integration. So this complex escorts them into T-rich region in the target DNA. It forms a AT hybrid, so RNA-DNA hybrid in the T-rich region. Eventually, the first strand synthesis takes place with the help of these reverse transcriptase containing activity, uh, reverse transcriptase activity containing enzyme. Eventually, the second strand synthesis also takes place and ultimately DNA joining and repair occurs that allows these lines or these kind of uh, transposons to get integrated into the genome. So the mode of transposition is very different from DNA based transposons or even retroviral retrotransposons. If you want to learn more about them, you can click on the link in the I button. But here is a problem. How does line selectively take the line mRNA or line sequence and put it in other place of the genome. I mean, these mRNA intermediates are very similar and it, it is similar to any random mRNA, let's say mRNA for gene X. So how does line make sure it doesn't translocate gene X's mRNA instead of its own? I mean, the proteins that are encoded by ORF2 can bind to both these mRNAs in theory. 
but in real life it has been found that these ORF2 derived proteins has a higher binding affinity towards line mRNA as soon as they are synthesized because there are specific sequences in the line mRNA that brings out that affinity context and thereby rarely a random transcript is uh, getting integrated into a random region of the genome. It happens, it's not totally impossible, but the occurrence is really rare. So let's talk about the functions of lines and signs. Like any other transposons, they can regulate plethora of things. It can have mutagenic affect. So basically it can hop into a particular or ORF of a particular gene and disrupt that gene, that's possible. There could be epigenetic silencing of a particular gene. These lines can also be a site for long non-coding RNA. Recent research suggests that. They can also act like an enhancer, thereby regulating the gene expression. Especially, signs are known for their roles in gene expression and modulating them. So I hope that was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can get the notes in my Facebook page. Follow us on Instagram. Support us via Super Thanks and see you in next video.